Hi, I'm Steve Brailsford and this video is all about the planning required to get a planting done on a drain. After all, good planning is a key to getting the performance out of your planting. Now I wouldn't tell a farmer how to manage his stock, but I know my plants, how to install them and get them to thrive and maintain them on the way to getting your full planting carried out. Now good planning will save you time and money and make your life a lot easier. Getting the right plant in the right place is a crucial part of maintaining the drainage function of the waterway. Now we've got an example here of the right plants planted in the right place where we've got the carrot sector on the stream edge and the flaxes and the bigger plants set back so that the drain, when it's in a full flood, can allow the water to pass through. Prior to planting this drain out, an excavator would have come through here each season to take out the water weeds that grow along the edges of the bank to maintain the uh, capacity of the drain to carry flood flows in the winter. Now those weeds grow from the interface where the water meets the bank. Now these carex grasses that have been installed here hang over the, that site, hang over the banks, have deep roots that penetrate into the ground and hold the banks and they shade out the sites where those water weeds grow from. And so since these have got established, a digger's never had to come in here and maintain this drain. Now here's a typical drain. So let's look at the opportunities in the planning process that we might go through towards planting it out. Make sure the landowner has given permission and check if consents or approvals are required. Find out what peak flows you can expect through the year and ensure that the drainage function is going to be maintained or enhanced as a result of the planting. If access is required for future drain maintenance, make sure you leave room when setting out plants and have low growing plants on that side so the digger can work over them. Exclude stock from your planting areas with fences. Make sure you put permanent fences far enough back so they don't get washed away in a flood or trap debris. Shading the water with taller plants, particularly on the northern bank, provides benefits for water quality and ecosystem health. Keep this in mind when planning your project. Steep sided drains are prone to undercutting and eventual collapse, taking your plants with them. Before installing them, you might need to think about constructing a flatter angle to the bank. And here we have an example of a well battered bank. It's got back to a nice flat angle. The plants have been recently installed and they're now set up in the long term not to be eroded away. This is a good long term solution. The spot that we're standing in at the moment really highlighted for me that we had surface water runoff right through until almost Christmas time. It looked like we had effluent and irrigators just, just sat on the property running into ditches. We had sediment and silt. So a real highlight of, of the issues that, that we are faced with in the catchment, which brought me to the conclusion that in an addressing and understanding the risk on the farm, that we needed to, to fence and, and maybe do some planting or something along those lines to, to mitigate that horizontal transfer of, of sediment, phosphorus and the like. Uh, it was simple, I guess I identified the sites and we've planted nine sites. We could have probably planted more and done more and over time we will. So this was just a wee bit of an experiment. But uh, it was simple just to, to identify those gullies, those points where water was leaving the property through those low points into the receiving environment. A lot of our drains and ditches are on higher points and we don't get that, that horizontal transfer. What we get are, are transfer into gullies, through gullies into dry ditches. So a wee bit of work involved going forward in, in maintaining weed control, but as you can see, this hasn't been touched since we sprayed it last autumn and this is the only regrowth we've got. So we're thinking maybe one or two sprays for the season and, and the job will be done. And again, not an onerous job, someone can grab a mat, knapsack couple of hours here, a couple of hours there, get the job done. We think of probably the drain as being the drain and maybe we're just starting to, to evolve the thinking that, that some of those feeders and laterals are the important parts as far as reducing sediment and, and loss going in. So you're right, what I can achieve here is reducing some of those inputs. Here we have a good example of a well-planned, installed and maintained site. These plantings are starting to contribute 
to better water quality into the stream. They're trapping sediments and nutrients off the adjoining land. They're adding to biodiversity and habitat for wildlife. So to recap, work out what you are trying to achieve before you start and have a long-term plan for looking after your planting. Get landowner permission and any consents or approvals required. Make sure your planting will enhance drainage. Allow for access for drain maintenance. Fence stock out. Shade the water. Rebatter or reshape the banks if necessary. Now you're ready to get started.